Hey guys, I'm super, super excited to have Gay today um, share with you all. Um, I've known her now for almost two years. Um, I shared a little earlier um, on the broadcast that I, I had a chance to spend a day with her about two weeks ago with the uh, Whole Self Formula guys. Um, and it was just a joy and a pleasure to be able to hang out with her. I've admired her from afar for two years. Um, we are mutual friends um, with Zach Young, who uh, runs amazing Amazon groups and, uh, and has a just a really cool tribe that he works with. And Gay's been part of that, uh, part of the leadership there. So I'm very happy. Thank you, Gay, for taking time out of your night uh, to share with us. Uh, whatever pearls of wisdom you have. And I know we're going to cover a wide range of topics tonight um, from selling on Amazon uh, to possibly some personal growth issues as well as to a phenomenal book that you've worse, uh, recently um, wrote. I know it's a project that's near and dear to your heart. Uh, obviously, it is a topic that I love. So uh, hopefully we can hit that toward the end of the interview as well. So Gay, just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how you started uh, selling on Amazon. Just share with us your story. Yeah, well, so here, here's what happened. Um, for, you know, he, he mentioned, Andy mentioned uh, Zach Young and just blessed to know this young man. Uh, I knew Zach back before he and Natalie got married and certainly way before the seven children and counting. I think he's going for a television show. That's what I keep accusing him of. <laughs> anyway, so they just got, just had their seventh baby. Uh, anyway, so I knew them even before they got married. And just really great uh, Christian young people, just really uh, very full of integrity, and I always uh, appreciated them. Well, then they got married, moved away, and I kind of lost contact with them. But in the meantime, life goes on. And uh, I got very sick at one point in my life and, uh, you know, then was going through a really deep valley and realized that my marriage wasn't what I thought it was. And uh, so when my marriage ended, um, I had nothing. I didn't even have a car. Fortunately, my sister had a car and she would come and haul me places. And um, I didn't have a place to live. Fortunately, I got a caregiver job. It was live in. And so I stayed with this old lady and, and took care of her needs and that sort of thing. I was there uh, when she went on to be with the Lord. And that was a, a great blessing to be able to be part of that journey with her in, uh, and, and, and see her grow in, into the very, very last minutes of, of her life, hours and days of her life. It was just, just a blessing. But in the meantime, you know, I had to make a living. After uh, the caregiving position ended, you know, we live in Branson, it's a tourist community, and the tourist season was winding down, and, uh, you know, people roll up the sidewalks, and it's done, and no jobs to be had, what was I going to do? I still had uh, health issues, so I couldn't be in the classroom and teach like I had done before. I was uh, in high school and then a middle school teacher, and so I didn't have that. So I was looking for something and um, just thinking on the computer, thinking, you know, I've heard of people making money online. I don't know how it's done. I don't know anything about this, but I'm going to figure something out. All of a sudden, Zach's mother-in-law posted something about an MLM group that he had joined and he was promoting, and I, was, I just reached out to him. And uh, he can tell his part of the story, how the Lord used that on his end, but on my end. So how, how many years ago was this? This was in, um, this was four years ago. Okay. So four years ago, just about this time of year. All right. Um, and, and so, you know, what happened was there was just an immediate connection. You know, it was like I just knew in my spirit that he was just a, um, a young man of integrity. And he was really trying to, um, you know, build a, a business and stay, be a stay-at-home dad and had these children to raise. And his heart was really to be there to support his wife, all the right reasons. And just seeing something happen that was really foreign to the way, you know, that I had raised, I had raised my children practically by myself. You know, I have four stair-step children all a year apart. And, uh, you know, I remember taking two cartloads of children through the grocery store, you know, and and, uh, and then put and pile in the groceries on top of them because there's nobody to keep my kids, you know, I go to the grocery store. So anyway, bottom line is we connected and uh, we went in a, a, a 
business opportunity, MLM business opportunity, kind of grew in that, grew a team in that, and as time went on, rolled into another one, rolled into another one. And um, that's where we found DS Domination, which led us to some real teaching material on how to do Amazon selling. And at that point, um, uh, our, our journeys kind of, you know, diverged again. And, um, you know, he just got into that DS Domination uh, teaching material, just went deep in it and just put down his head and just learned everything. In the meantime, I had a, uh, elderly gentleman that was a friend of the lady I had taken care of before in uh, in uh, uh, caregiving and uh, hospice caregiving, and he was just about to finish his journey here on this earth. So his wife was begging me to come and, and be with them. So I did. It was a great blessing again uh, to be with him. And and you know, there's so many so many times I've seen how the Lord shows up and ministers to people in those times, but. Um, in, in the meantime, Zach's got his head down, and he is flat making money. And he'd pop up all of a sudden, and he'd, he'd hit me on Facebook, and he'd go, "Hey, you got to learn to do this. And I'm like, dude, I've got this, you know, and, and, and God's given me this to do, and I will. I'm, I'm going to learn it. I'm going to learn it. You know, and then next thing you know, it would be another couple of months, okay, you got to do it. I'm like, ah, I can't. <laughs> This. And there may be somebody in your life right now, maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's a relative, it's like, dude, you got to do this. You need to learn as Amazon selling. And I'm going to say this, this is, a, this is what caught me with, with Zach. He said, you know what? He said, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like a gold rush. <laughs> he said, you know, but gold rushes don't last forever. <laughs> things change. And, you know, you've all witnessed that, you know, how, in, uh, in technology and stuff like that, things change so fast that what was real innovative and cutting edge even five years ago is passe. It's, and I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt for a second. It's so <laughs> funny. It's so funny that he was like that because I had a friend um, who was like that with me two years prior to I to when I started selling on Amazon. It was actually my next door neighbor. For two wow. years, she was like, "Andy, you got to get into this. You got to get into this." And shame on me, like I didn't listen to her. Um, and had I listened to her, I would, I think I would really be probably two years further along, you know, as well as like that, at that time, the profit was just amazing. Oh, you know, it was a lot, lot less sellers. Yeah, a lot less sellers. The competition. And so, but here's what I'm saying now to, to people who are listening to me. If you haven't really gone into this, and gotten serious about your opportunity grab this thing by the throat and just you know wrestle it to the ground do whatever you have to do you know that's Ozark vernacular for get busy because <laughs> this is an opportunity and things will change it's not gonna last forever in the way that it is right now but while this is moving I'm going with it it's a train that I'm on so let me let me ask you this. So I think you're going to do probably close to a million dollars this year. Is that right? Well, no, it's going to be close to two million. It'd be oh. million. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. A million is good. <laughs> so, but I just I just want to recap for folks. So you're going to do two million. You you really started kind of getting into the Amazon then yeah. probably like two and a half years ago where you're selling on Amazon. Yeah. Had, had did you have any e-commerce experience? Well, prior prior to selling on Amazon, were you like a you know a huge a eBay seller or no, no, you know, no, so that, no. I want to bring that out because so that folks understand right the kind of opportunity. It wasn't like you came into this with a ton of experience, even in business. I think you shared earlier that you were a school teacher. Is that right? Right, right, and you know that's the thing that that. Uh, both eBay and Amazon have created very user-friendly platforms. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. I'm proof of that. You know, I'm like a middle-aged woman who's kind of stumbled along here. You know, I used to email my kids. You know, they're all in, you know, making a living on their computers. You know, my boys are programmers. And so I would say, hey, Jesse, what about this? And they'd be like, oh, mom. You know, and, and I was so dumb at it. You know, but Zach kept popping up going, Wow, 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 do this, you know. <laughs> so, like, what happened was, uh, I, you know, I just started selling a little bit on eBay because that seemed like something that was really doable to me because I had bought stuff off eBay. So, that kind of made sense to me. And plus, I didn't have any money, I didn't have any capital. 
you know, I had nothing in the bank to go by. So I would go at the thrift store on the weekends or, you know, I'd get off my caregiving job and I would go, you know, maybe get out a few minutes early and jump into the thrift store just before they were about to close and I would find something. You know, I found a man's dress hat, a 1950s dress hat. The thrift store had it on, had it for a dollar twenty-five cents. I bought it for a dollar twenty-five cents. Sold it on eBay for ninety-nine dollars. <laughs> yeah, I buy, bought a pilot, a genuine pilot airplane pilot's cap. Same thing. You know, they had just put it out. It wasn't even priced. I said, "Hey, are you going to sell this yet, or you want to wait in price?" She goes, "Ah, just give me a dollar for it." And I was like, "Okay, what?" Well, you know, same thing. It's, it's so cool that you say that because this is what I recommend to people all the time because I'll often hear people come to me, they'll say, but Andy, I only have this amount of capital, right, to start with. The great thing about this business is even if you have $100 or $200, if you're willing to sacrifice your time, right, and really get out and hustle and go to those thrift stores or like when I first started, I would, I would canvas all the garage sales. I made some amazing margins, right, off of items at garage sales that that really then started to build my capital. Come on, and that's exactly, and that's what I would do, and and I would highly recommend that if you don't have any capital, if you do, good, good job. You know, you're going to go faster than I did. Well, you know, we 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 got started selling, and uh, my sister was really sick at that time. She had a lot of health issues. She couldn't help me as much as I. Uh, really would have liked to or, or she would have liked to but you know we stumbled along and we started really kind of selling in, in uh, eBay messing around and backing up our stuff into and a little bit of Amazon selling stuff about September of 2014 so in that Q4 our first Q4 uh, we, we did ordered product sales 17,000 well, that got our attention so the net 2015 we're on like Donkey Kong we're like, yeah, we, we're going to ride this train, and and we just went um, just went crazy. We just we just kept buying. And this is a key: is keep buying and keep putting mer merchandise in there. You can't sell what you don't have. <laughs> yeah, you really. Can't sell what you don't have. I say this often, all the time. We're an inventory based business, right? And so you have to have inventory in there. Yeah, and you know, and I have people ask me this all the time. What level do you need to get to before you can really start taking money out of your business? And I say, don't take money out of your business until you absolutely have to. I mean, just let that money. So here's with the eBay selling that we did, like thrift store buys, da 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 da. You know, a lot of you have heard my story about how I paid off the the mortgage in one year. No, we haven't. To share that story. Okay, well, <laughs> it's, it's a cookbook. You know, I mean, it was a, the problem was a cookbook. You know, me and my sister were, you know out to one in the in the fall that was in 2014 we we're on the fall and we went to some little it was called the museum of junk it was just a junk store <laughs> and it was kind of cool but it was and i found an old cookbook that i was familiar with from the farm or growing up on the farm my mom had used it i was familiar with big thick cookbook and it was two bucks i got it you know so like Zach's like, get merchandise in, get merchandise in. And then I'm kind of doing this a little bit on eBay. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to just get books around the house and do what he said and just get my first shipment in and into Amazon. And so I put this cookbook in here. I got it for two bucks. I sold it on Amazon for 88 bucks. I was like, are you kidding me? But then here's the other thing. Here's what people don't do, and it always puzzles me is then I pressed repeat. So I went, I Googled that cookbook uh, um, name, and I bought all the cookbooks. You know, somebody on Books had it. Somebody over here on eBay had it. Somebody on Amazon had it. So my sister bought it through her account, you know, and uh, sold it, we sold it through my account. And we just kept pressing repeat. I don't know how many, and then over in the Memphis Summit, you know, somebody, I had the, I brought one of the cookbooks. I said, "Hey, who's ready to do this?" I mean, they, they, you know, these these people are rushing the stage. Yeah, I want that cookbook. You know? <laughs> so it was just things like that. But here's what I did: is I left that money to work for us. So all the money I made in eBay, it went into my PayPal account. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch. I didn't live on it. I didn't pay the electric bill. I didn't pay groceries or whatever. You know, we just continued to make that happen through other venues, other ways. 
because that is merchandise money. And so we just kept rolling it into merchandise, rolling it into merchandise. That's so smart. So all the folks that are watching, you know, if you're just getting started, definitely get your notebook out. You want to write that down. I love that phrase. That 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 was merchandise money that you kept rolling in. It's merchandise money. It was so cool with, with, with our eBay start because we didn't have capital and we didn't have credit. Okay? So here's the thing about for, for me, why I just really am so thankful that we didn't have capital and we didn't have credit is because it forced us to be creative in how we viewed what we did have. Because if you have capital and you have credit, you don't look at a $2 cookbook and see any value in it. You see what I'm saying? It's yep, a absolutely. mindset. Yep. It bring a mindset and every single day when you work your business, you're bringing your limitations to Amazon's unlimited platform. Ever expanding, constantly growing, completely unlimited platform. You know, it would blow us away that a that a, a an item that you and I know that we just bought at Walmart for five ninety nine would sell on Amazon for twenty four ninety nine. You'd be like, why don't you just go to Walmart? And then I'm like, you know what? Guess what? Everybody doesn't live like we do. You know, my son lives in Houston. He lives in the city. He would rather pay $24.99 on Amazon knowing that if he got in the car, he could buy it for $5.99 from Walmart, but he does not want to go on that freeway or that interstate to get it because it can be at his door tomorrow or the next day. Okay? Mm -hmm. You have to take off the limitations because, see, everybody doesn't work within your limitations. You just have to accept that as a fact. And that's a life fact that I bring to everything I do. When I, would, when I was teaching, I would tell the students, we live in an ever-expanding, always creating. You are completely, and I would say to those kids, who are you? They'd be like, well, my name is James. No, James. <laughs> you don't get it. As soon as you answered that question, you started living in the limitations of James who James thinks he is, <laughs> who other people have told you James is. I said, James, here's what I know. James, you're the person who's going to write the next best-selling novel, the one that's going to blow everybody's mind. You're the guy who's going to invent the engine that, that, that <clears throat> powers a magnetic train. You're the guy. That's so that's so awesome. So just you saying that is kind of giving me chills. So I was in I was in a career before I started selling on Amazon. One that I really loved, I was a house parent, right? I did it for 15 years. But after doing it for 15 years, right, and not having a lot of experience doing other things, I was I felt like I was kind of pigeonholed. And so I felt like basically for the rest of my life, I was gonna have to do that because I was limiting myself. Uh, and so I just I so thought I it in. yeah exactly I thought I was not going to be able to do anything else ever right and then I started selling on Amazon and just like you said oh my goodness now I found like all kinds of things that I can do and, and it's kind of helped me realize that if I have to transition to another career I can do something else as well because what I've learned doing here but but in that 15 year time period and probably in the last five years of that 15 so year 10 to year 15 I'll be honest I was a little bit depressed <laughs> because I had that self-limiting um, thought, you know, like, man, I'm pretty much going to be stuck doing this the rest of my life. That's exactly right. And, and see, that's the thing that, um, that real society will put you there. You know, your parents will put you there because their parents or their belief systems will put you there. And, and the thing that puts you there more than anything, the, the force that puts you there more than anything is fear. Fear has torment. It just does. Fear torments. And, and this is the thing is, you know, it, even my sister and I were talking about this today is we're, we're just touched by something that was, that was said at church and we we're like, you know, here's what we learned is what is like we're faced with something that appears to be an obstacle we put we we leap forward we don't just kind of sink you know go around the edges of it but we leap forward see 
here's an obstacle <clears throat> obstacle to selling on Amazon when Zach's calling me saying, "Hey, you got to do this." You know, he's got capital and I don't. He's got credit and I don't. So I could have said, "Therefore, hmm. I can't." But see, I'm not good at math. And so I never get to the same therefore that most people do. Zach says, da da da. And I say, I don't got capital, I don't got credit, but I could. <laughs> I can generate capital, and capital eventually will generate credit. All right? So therefore, I can. <laughs> I just end every sentence and I can. And when I'm coaching people, here's what I tell them listen. Is your, is your income on a plateau? Here's some of you Amazon sellers that you have just languished on the edges of success. What I mean by that, you haven't gotten successful yet. In other words, you can't live on what you're making on Amazon, and you're certainly not experiencing um, Andy's sweatshirt right now. Mm -hmm. Andy, go set up there. Let's see what you got there. Amazing freedom. <laughs> you're not experiencing freedom. Here's what freedom is. Freedom is that you sign up for a, a conference that that uh, multiple figures you sign up for that conference and you don't miss the money uh, uh, freedom is that on the way back from your conference a fourth of what you spent <laughs> gets handed back to you in one product find <laughs> it's completely accidental completely accidental you know, here's the thing. My, my sister's uh, grandson's always joking me about this. He, th he thinks I'm the luckiest person on earth because almost every single day I'll find a lucky penny or a lucky dime or a lucky quarter. <laughs> and so now it's just funny now because it just happens all the time. It appears to be luck. Well, here's what it really is. I know where they are. <laughs> you know where they are. You follow them. I know where they are. I know how they fall off people's pockets. I know how they, I know where to look. I know where they are. <laughs> so there's a little bit of skill involved in my luck, okay? <laughs> but you know what? It's because I approach it with everything's possible. Where, where's my lucky coin today? You know, 10 cents becomes 20 cents. 20 cents becomes a dollar. A dollar becomes a hundred. A hundred dollars becomes a million dollars. A million becomes a million and a half. A million and a half becomes two. And then I'm like, okay, we're going to end the year in a million and a half or two in uh, ordered product sales. What can we do there? Hmm. Okay, I know. Let's double it. <laughs> and so this is where I hit the other key. And let, me, let me let me interrupt you for one second. Here. So we got some new new folks that have joined in here. So we're talking with Gay Lisby. Uh, she has been selling on Amazon now for about two and a half years didn't have any really formal business experience or e-commerce experience prior to starting on Amazon, had to really bootstrap when she started, basically build up capital. Uh, this year she will do close to two million, maybe even over two million dollars in sales, uh, working out of her home along with her sister. Uh, just an amazing story of perseverance. And what we're talking about right now and what she just shared is really about mindset. Uh, which I often say is the number one key to being successful really in anything that you or I do in life, but particularly when it comes to selling on Amazon. If somebody has the type of mindset that you just described, Gay, I have no doubt, 100% uh, confident that they are going to be successful selling on Amazon. So uh, yeah, just continue to talk along those lines with us. I, I love it. Well, you know, that's that's exactly right. And it and it starts in the mindset because the mindset has to be hope. You know, hope changes everything. Hope is the is the opposite force of fear. You know, that that fear comes and it says Let me, and one one more thing when you say that, because I'm getting old, so I forget. So when you talk about fear, right? That was me a lot. One of the things that changed my mindset when it came to fear was Chris Green. So um, he's a pretty big, well-known guy about Amazon. Well, I sent him like 30 messages inviting him to my house in Hershey and, and telling him basically, because at the time we had a uh, empty house during the summer, our students would go home and said, hey, look, bring your family. You can stay in our house. I'm not going to bug you. It took me 30 messages on Facebook. He didn't know me from Adam, right? 30 messages. And finally he said, all right, I'm tired of you asking me 
I talked to my wife, we're going to come. He had no idea like if the house was just going to be, you know, a piece of junk or, or what, but he came. Uh, it was a very nice place. And, uh, and then in that time, I talked to him and he said, look, Andy, the worst, he said, the main thing that you have to do is you have to try. And he said, the worst that can happen is you're going to fail. You'll learn from it. And then you figure out and then you try again. And for some reason, now that seems like simple advice, right? But for some reason, when he said it, it gave me the confidence to say, you know what? You're right. I'm just going to go for it. If I fail, I'm going to learn. And really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? If I fail, it's, the, it's just kind of trying. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, it's, I mean, it's right. At the end of the day, if you fail, you haven't failed yourself. That's the key. Because people walk around with these failures because they failed themselves. They, they live in cubicles that they have created. They, you know, um, my uh, uh, brother-in-law is a computer, you know, big guru with uh, Delta Airlines. Now, <clears throat> now he's, I mean, now he's way, way, way up there. But he started in a cubicle, you know, and he used to call them the gopher holes, you know, because they'd pop up <laughs> and walk along, see somebody on the, you know, way down there. And, you know, people create those gopher holes because they decide to live there. And, and you have to constantly recreate where you are. And a purchase, one purchase can, can be a part of recreating that. You know, I have had a lady reach out to me and she was like, and she's like, I don't know how you find this stuff. And I said, this stuff finds me. <laughs> this stuff finds me because, okay, this is honest to God truth. I'm going to tell you the honest to God truth. We're on our way home from the summit down there in, the, in the Kentucky, Andy. And y'all, y'all guys are fighting over armrests, and me and, <laughs> me and my sister, my Colleen, we're you know we're driving around. We stayed a day later and, and, and went around Cumberland Falls area. You know, saw it was so beautiful. Hey, Dylan, you're awesome. <laughs> and, uh, so, so then we we went on to uh, Paducah and uh, or by Paducah, Kentucky, and we spent the night. So the next day we're getting a week. We got up and and going and and uh, so here's a Walmart literally you know just off the interstate and i mean you could just have fallen off the interstate onto its roof so it's saying to us come in here <laughs> so we go in because we listen so we go in and and so like we go to the clearance aisle because you know but that was like right and we we're romping and we can we can case out a walmart in about I would say 30 minutes or less. <laughs> and so now uh, we're boop, 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 and she's doing her thing, and I'm doing my thing. And I go down this one, and I pass this lady, and it's a Walmart uh, uh, worker, and she's acting a little bit odd, because usually they're real preoccupied and putting stuff on the shelf, and they don't ask you if you need something or need help or whatever. So I thought, she's kind of new. And so I stopped and greeted her, and... And uh, it, she said, can I help you with anything? I said, no, I'm just, you know, I'm just, hey, I said, what's the big thing? You know, I said, I said here I am in the toy department. I said, what's going to be big? Well, I buy, I've got, I've got probably half a million dollars in, in toy merchandise I've been buying. I know toys. Yep. So I didn't have to ask that question. Why did I ask that question? Because I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly learning because I don't know all the answers. You know, if some of you had half a million dollars that you purchased in toy merchandise. You'd be like, I know toys. You can't tell me nothing about toys. But I'm like, tell me about toys. I was like, what? And she said, she goes, I don't know. She goes, I'll tell you. She goes, my daughter, and she's all about the Hatchimals. Hatchimals, Hatchimals. Do you know, I had never even heard the word Hatchimals. <laughs> I never even heard of it. Yeah. You know, I got, I got all this money in toy merchandise and lots of, I mean, big time stuff. Didn't even know what Hatchimal. I said, what's Hatchimal? She's like, oh, it's over here. She shows me there's three on the shelf. I said, oh, cute. I scan it. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> and my eyeballs fell out. And, you know, so I put all three in the cart. I go find my sister. I was like, oh. And on my way, I passed the manager of the store. And I said, hey, you have any more of these? And he goes, wow, I didn't know we had those. You're lucky. And I said, yeah, I am. <laughs> and that's just, I am lucky. And I'm lucky because I'm always listening, always watching. <laughs> and uh, so I said, hey, is there, is, what's your nearby Walmart store? Do you think they have any more? He goes, oh, look it up. 
So he picks up his little thingy, and they got 20 more in a Walmart that's just 30 miles straight north, 30 miles out of our way. It's going to be 60 miles totally out of our way. I'm like, ain't no rocket scientist. <laughs> I'm going. We go up there. No, actually, he said uh, that they had uh, 14 more. So we get up there. Do you know the guy, the toy guy, is literally slicing open the boxes of Hatchimals as I pull the cart around the corner. Nice. What? <laughs> what? I said, blah, blah, blah. He goes, oh, I think there's a two-person, I think there's a two-Hatchimal limit. <laughs> I said, really? Did they say that? And he goes, oh, I just think there is. He acted like the merchandise was belong to him, and he, he had <laughs> an arm wrestling for it. So anyway, <laughs> um, I took what, you know, he acted like he was going to want me to have, and then Colleen took what she thought he was going to want him to have. <laughs> then we circled back around when he went on break and got all the rest of them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then we went through the, went through the checkout. They didn't say anything about a limit. Right, um, right. What? You made that up. Anyways. <laughs> We end up with 20 from that store. So we had 23 Hatchimals. Nice. What? And they were selling, they were selling for $199 uh, on Amazon. Uh -huh. The buy box when I did the scan. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Why can you do that to me, God? Why are you so crazy in love with me? Mm. I don't get it. Because I don't even get it. And he's always like, he's up there just howling with laughter, going, you know what, that Walmart was just there, and Dan and Colleen were just practically going by the Walmart, and I was like, hey, the Walmart's calling us, boom, you know, and we respond. But, you know, here's the thing, we're always asking questions, too. I could have passed right by that gal and gone, this is our first day at Walmart. She don't know nothing. She, didn't, she hadn't even worked at Walmart 24 hours yet. She didn't know anything. If I'd have asked her where the crayons were, she wouldn't have been able to tell me where the crayons were. Not, not only that, I mean, look, look at how much sales you are right now, right? You're going to do close to two million this year, but yet you still have a mindset of you're willing to go 30 miles out of your way, 60 miles total, right? Um, right. You know, and again, like you, it wasn't for sure how many that really they were going to have. Or even if you, they would have the 14 by the time we drove up there. Right. So, I mean, you, you definitely, you add some, I don't know what you want to call it. You got some grit or some whatever you're adding to, you know, look, you got to get it done. You know what it is? It's just, it's expectation. And here's what people get. They're like, well, I'm doing about a million, you know. And so they, plat they plateau because they stopped pushing. See, if I had passed by that deal, you know, that's X number of dollars less that I would have in my ordered product sales. Then, then the next deal I pass by, that's a many, and after a while, your plateau begins to decline. And here's what I always tell my people, the, the coaching clients that I've had, is if you find yourself on a plateau, learn something new. You find yourself on a plateau, learn something new. You need a new skill, you need a new thought. The reason that you're on a plateau is because you're not thinking something new. You don't have a new thought, and you don't have a new skill. Learn something, and you'll be going back up, back up, back up. You know, as soon as I saw what our order product sales, what we're projecting for this year, I was like, okay, we got to get a course set for us. So when this uh, summit came up in Kentucky, I'm like, boom, you know? I'm like, oh, God, please let them choose me. Please let them choose me. <laughs> because, hey, we got, we got things to do, places to go. You know? so, all right, so talk, let's just stop here and talk a little bit about um, retail arbitrage, right? Uh, I, I, it's a very successful model if people have the hustle and the work ethic um, and they're willing to learn. I think, you know, basically, again, it's something that anybody can do. So, um, you know, just talk to us a little bit about how that's played an important role in, in your business and, or maybe still does play an important role in your business. Yeah, it does. It still does. And the reason that it does is because it exposes us to new ideas and new products and new possibilities. And so um, if you're just going to, if you're, you're living your life in front of your computer all day, which is easy to do when online earning is what you're doing, and you live like your life in front of your computer, the danger is that you can get small very quickly. 
And so you've got to constantly be pulling. And that's why you need to be, get on these webinars and these things that Andy's doing, Zach's doing, other guys are doing, because you need to be constantly putting in new information. And um, so for retail, for us, retail arbitrage is a fun way to do it. To be honest, and I've told this story before, I hate to shop. I'm not a shopper. I'm a getter. My sister's a shopper, so like, you know, I had to speak at that summit down in Memphis, and, and I, I didn't even, and she, I was like, could you just go buy my clothes for me? <laughs> I don't want to. And she's like, oh, you are so, you are the worst, you know? I don't like to shop. I'm a getter. But so, but everywhere I go, I'm pulling out that, that, uh, that uh, phone, and, you know, Colleen's grandson, we got him trained for retail arbitrage now, too. We're going I have to tell this story on it because it's hilarious. Andy, you'll chuckle on this one. And he's not here right now, and he's eight. <laughs> and oh, this one's cool. So we're going through the store, and we're doing retail arbitrage. He goes, hey, scan this gate. So I scan it. And I said, oh, no, it's no money in that one, Ethan. That's what's going on. So we go on to the next one, next one. We turn around the corner, and we go to the baby department. And he goes right straight to, you know, eye level. What's eye level to an eight-year-old? And he pulls his box off the shelf, and he goes, hmm, he goes, scan this day. And so I'm kind of chuckling, you know, because I'm thinking, uh, I know what that is. And so I go to scan it, and while I'm scanning it, he's reading the front of the box. <laughs> and he goes, what? <laughs> That's for a lady to milk herself with. <laughs> and he threw it back on the shelf, and he ran away, and he goes, there's no money in that. <laughs> And he ran away. Well, he ran right around the corner, and Colleen's there, and we're kind of, you know, behind our hands, you know. He went right straight across to the grocery aisle. He goes, and this is eye level to an eight-year-old. He pulls a product off the shelf, and he says, hey, scan this. Colleen and I both looked at him, kind of chuckled, because it's a very well-known product. You know, you, you, you probably buy it every week at the grocery store. Yeah. Pulled it off the shelf. I scanned it. I was like, what? I said, buddy, there's a hole, and we're going to go through it. <laughs> he goes, okay. He goes, get all you can. So he knows the drill. You know, he's loading them in the cart. And darn if the kid hasn't made several hundred dollars on that one product, you know. That's but awesome. We're always looking, and it always is, exposes us to new ideas and new information. So that's one of the things. If you're on a plat plateau, and this is the thing that I've always taught myself, even before I did online selling and that. If you get to a plateau, you need to learn a new skill. You need to get a new thought. Yeah, that's that's phenomenal. All right, so um, you did RA, very successful, right? You bootstrapped from the beginning. For those of you that are just joining, this is Gay Lisby. She's going to do close to $2 million in sales this year. She does a business with her sister. This was not her career profession. She was not trained in business. She uh, started selling on Amazon about two and a half years ago and has put a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears into her business and has grown it to the level that it's at. I love her story because I think it's a story of, um, it's, a, it's, it's really a story that could be anybody's story if they put work and effort um, into this business and really believe in selling on Amazon. And so, um, so you did RA. Now, have you transitioned at all? Like, do you do any other sourcing models? Do you do like wholesale? Do you do private label? Um, or any anything like that right yeah well we then we transitioned I mean we, we got our start with you know uh, RA is with with everybody and it really everybody should because that's a really great opportunity to learn the platform and uh, make quick and easy money the downside I will say this the downside of retail arbitrage is it can spoil you a little bit <laughs> because a lot of times you know you find those kinds of deals where you're putting like $48 down for a toy that you can sell for $199 <laughs> and when you, then you say hey I'm gonna go straight to the manufacturer and I'm gonna get that well you won't make those kinds of margins but what you will make is very deep instead of 23 Hatchimals then you could be selling 23,000 Hatchimals throughout the year, for example. So the numbers then can can go go uh, big in a hurry, but it goes deep. And uh, so yes, we, we uh, very quickly transitioned into wholesale as well. Actually that happened because Zach, um, uh, because I, I try to be as useful to whoever as possible. I bring my skills and my talents, my abilities to them and just say, how can I be a blessing to you? And uh, so it was able to be a blessing to him and some. 
ways. And when I got let, my let me let me just stop there for a minute because you just kind of brushed over that. This is when I first saw you, right? Uh, yeah. And I first met Gaze and another group is uh, uh, the leader of that group. His name is Zach Young. And um, and when I was talking to my nephew Nathan, who you know. I was like, man, isn't she amazing? Like, wouldn't you love to have her in your group? Because your your leadership and your encouragement, right, in that group what is like what I saw immediately. But so that was a decision. And, and I love that, that you were like, how can I give value, right, to Zach? Or how can I give value to his group? Right. Well, you know, for me, and, and you know, maybe not everybody has this mindset, but for me, I, I really feel that this is important. It's, it, I cannot expect anyone to bring value to me or to offer value to me if I have not already first. I mean, you you reap what you sow, and so I like to constantly sow value, and and then you know then if when it's time to reap, then I can have some pieces of that as well. And that, for example, you know, I was able to bring my writing skills and and uh, my background in in English education. And uh, that sort of thing, it helped Zach with the with a lot of the sales funnels and that sort of thing to write and edit and et cetera, et cetera, and uh, and able to help him with some some guidance on uh, stuff in the back end. And so then when he starts buying these big buys that that first year, you know, I have my little wad of money piled up in PayPal, and because of my eBay selling, you know, getting stuff at the thrift stores, so on and so forth. And so I was like, ah, you know, could I get, you know, you would you let me buy like a hundred units of that from from your big buy, you know, from your buy? And he was like, well, yeah, sure, because you know what? If if you really view life as a partnership, it's so much richer. Mm-hmm. You know, I would I would rather, you know, it is so much richer. So you know, I was able to, as I call it, wiggle into a couple of buys that way. Well, the next thing you know, then that money rolls, and then that money rolls, and that money rolls, and and so we are having opportunities that we wouldn't have had. A lot of people say, "Well, I don't have anything to bring," and I would always challenge that, and especially in middle school when I, when I was teaching middle school, I find I find out, Andy, this is honest truth. I find out that adults are a lot like middle schoolers, <laughs> especially adults that's been around for a while. They're kind of like, you know. I mean, they're not squirrely like middle schoolers. Like middle right. schoolers can be squirrely. Like if you say that, if you say anything that starts with the word S, they're like, <laughs> which is really squirrely. Well, so you I know what know. happens to us though is just like what you talked about earlier. We we begin to develop limiting beliefs, right? Um, and instead of so, my wife teaches, um, and she's big into social and emotional learning. And the buzzword is growth mindset, basically. Right. You know, in education circles. And as we get older we tend to lose that growth mindset. Whereas, you know, a five-year-old or six or seven, or even probably, you know, two, three or four, that growth mindset is just they're growing and learning, right? And, and grabbing all that information. And then as, as we get into age, I think we start to limit ourselves. Yeah, that's right. Because we, and, and you know, we constantly have to fight against that. But, you know, if, if this is, I'll just share something personal if you don't mind, but just for me, you know, what I, I can't, you know, my, my personal background is, you know, I, I grew up on the farm and, you know, my father was a very mean man. He was a mean, mean man. And that, that's all I'll say about it, except that he was very mean. Yep. Um, and, you know, and meanness often uh, comes, you know, in, in, you know, physical violence, but also it, it always comes with words. Yep. And so I've had years and constantly still, you know, have to lay, you know, lay off the words and, and say, you know, that that's not true. That's not true. You know, what's true is what does God say about me? Yep. You know, what does God say? And you know what God says about you? I know what God says about you because I, I know what he says about me. And he says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yep. You are like, whoa. This is God when he looks at you. He's like, whoa, you awesome. You cool. Yeah, you can do that. And see, I'm constantly telling my little baby granddaughter, and you know, uh, Ethan Collings' grandson, you know, yeah, you are so, oh, you are so awesome. You're doing that. And God's behind us kind of going like that. And But those limiting beliefs come in, and we apply those to even how we purchase something to send into Amazon. 
we look at that and we go, we go, well, okay, that happened to Gabe, but probably won't happen to me. Why? Why do you do you think that product is is like somehow likes gay better than than you, you know? Or that happened to Andy, but it won't happen to me. Why? It's a, just a product. And this is the other thing people miss with Amazon is Amazon is just a whole stream of metrics. It's just a bunch of numbers. Amazon runs on metrics. It's not a personal or emotional thing. It's not like. Amazon's not up there saying, I like Andy, <laughs> but I don't like Allison. Amazon is not doing that. That merchandise that's going through there is going through just as well for Andy as anybody else, anybody else. You just got to be pushing it in there. Push those and trust those numbers. Trust that metrics. And, and you know, the more merchandise you buy, the more merchandise you sell. Okay, how did you get to be such, you know, at that level? Well, for me, I could be considered a very small seller to many others. You know, I've been rubbing shoulders now with some others that I'm like, dude, <laughs> whoa, blow my mind. How do you get there? Teach me, you know. But how do you do that? You, you just keep pushing the merchandise in, keep pushing the merchandise in. And Amazon is not personal. Amazon doesn't hate you. Amazon doesn't send a performance notification to you because it's suddenly like, I don't like that guy down in Mississippi. <laughs> Just metrics. Get over it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome. So uh, those of you that are, are just joining us, I see some folks there. We're, we're talking with Gay Lisby. He's been selling on Amazon about two and a half years. He's going to do close to two, and a, uh, $2 million this year uh, in sales. And, um, and, yeah, so just exciting to see, right, someone that's able to grow that quickly um, as an as a, uh, Amazon seller. Uh, you know, there were some folks that we met at, at the summit a couple weeks ago that blew my mind. Um, there was one guy that uh, actually a year ago, uh, he was doing um, just, uh, I believe, just RA and a little bit of always, like $35,000 a month. He decided to put his time and effort into wholesale, and within a year, he leaped from thirty-five thousand a month. He has a full-time job as well. He's now doing two hundred thousand dollars a month, all wholesale, and he did that within a year. Um, and so, you know, you you talked about it a little earlier in the broadcast that you know when Zach was talking to you about selling on Amazon, he said it's a gold rush. I personally think that um, there is still um, a little bit of a gold rush. Uh, I'm not sure when, you know, it'll hit that tipping point where it becomes less. But for folks like this guy who I met, <laughs> I mean, he would probably share with you. He works like 10 hours a week selling $200,000 a month on Amazon that it's still pretty much in that gold rush period. Yeah, and it is, and I think it will continue to be because here's, here's one of the things that we have to really get in our minds is that Amazon – is operating on a set of metrics that really it has been created by distribution geniuses. Amazon has done what no other company has been able to do heretofore, and that is to solve the problem of getting merchandise into the hands of customers at a, at a, a very, very economical rate. And so what it is is a distribution genius. And that genius continues to grow. What I mean by that is once those metrics are set, then you have a number of uh, statistics and data that you can base your next decision on, your next decision on. And people pretty typically are typical all over. You know, Canadian people, hi Lydia, Canadian people aren't, you know, that much different than Pennsylvania people. And Pennsylvania people aren't that much different than Missouri people. I mean, we think alike. We do the same kinds of things. We all get up in the morning. We all go to bed at night. There are certain characteristics that are the same. And so those metrics kind of carry that forward. Here's what a lot of people are like, well, what if Walmart does this and that? Well, you know, what if? Walmart's been around a long time. You know, if Walmart was going to if Walmart was going to get up and be a massive force against Amazon, it would have done it in the year 2000. It, it's, it's 2016. So I'm not, I'm not worried about that. And see, that's the other thing, Andy, that, that people stop. They don't ship that shipment. They don't buy that product. They don't make that decision. 
is because they what if themselves into stop. What if it's a bad deal? What if I buy this product and I can't sell it for what I want? What if? <laughs> Dang it, you'll sell it. <laughs> and it's not the end of the world. Maybe you won't get two times what you wanted for or two times what you paid for it, but you're going to sell it. Amazon sells ridiculous things. Yeah, I mean, I'll just add to that. So I often share a story of a PL item that I personally messed up on. It should have never sold. And I sold through 500 units in like four months. When I say it should have never sold, it should have never, ever sold. But the Amazon sales channel is so powerful that within like four months, I sold through 500 units. And I ended up still making a little bit of money right on each unit. But that's how powerful the Amazon sales channel is. So, hey, we, yeah. have, like, we have about eight minutes left. Yeah, so let's transition because I know that you had a recent project that's very near and dear to your heart. Um, you wrote a book and, uh, and you did it through CreateSpace, which is another awesome Amazon program. Uh, yeah. that allows folks that maybe have never even thought about authoring a book. It allows uh, you, you and I really the opportunity um, to, to be able to um, format it and put it through CreateSpace and then bam, sell it on, on demand on Amazon. So can you just share with us a little bit about that experience, kind of what you learned about CreateSpace and um, just the story yeah. behind it? Yeah, and that's another, um, that's another line of income that some of you really should look at. For, for some of, if you're in my age group or maybe even Andy's age group, and, and that's certainly from Andy up, you know, you're kind of from that traditional bookstore mindset or book publisher mindset where it's like, you know, create your manuscript and send it off to a publisher and hope that they accept your manuscript and publish it for you, et cetera, et cetera. And that's old school. And really, you need to just lay that, just press delete, Boop, it's gone, because that, kind, that day is really gone. CreateSpace is a publishing platform that gives you access to all the Amazon buyers you want, and in a, a very professionally done, I mean, you, you can't get it done any better than you could get it from a major publisher, and, um, and then have access to the selling platform and even major publishers would have several steps to go through to get access, get their book on uh, Amazon's platform. So create space, highly recommend it. it was a great experience for me. And I was telling Andy before the, the show that I was really surprised at how user friendly it was, how easy it was for me to do and the support, uh, the customer support on that really, really sound. And you can, you can come in at whatever level you want. Maybe you've got your manuscript written, and you can even format it in book format. I think Word, um, Microsoft Word has a publisher program, and there's other publisher programs out there. Probably Mac does, and, and you can format it the way you want to. Well, and you tell us about like how, how different is that from the way it used to be, like if you wanted to author a book? Well, how different, you know, when you, if you used to want to author, author a book, then, then you send your manuscript to the publisher and hope that that get, gets accepted. They have thousands and thousands of manuscripts that would sit on the desk and never get read. Or they would just automatically, you know, uh, everything that came in on Mondays was automatically rejected just to clear the pile. Yeah, or, or you're going to have to pay yourself, right, to have 500 books printed maybe. Exactly. And that's so, so cool because I don't have to have a single book in my house. I mean, I do because I'm smart like that. Mm -hmm. but. <laughs> <laughs> It's available on Amazon.com, right? Yeah, so hey, let me just say that. Look, folks, if you really want to do, if you want to give some value, so Gay has just shared basically an hour with us, right, of, of sharing her story about how she's going to sell close to $2 million. Hold that book up there for a second, Gay. Do, do, if you want to do me a huge favor, do Gay a huge favor, go to Amazon right now. Um, look at that title for the book, God Within Us. That's her name right there, Gay Lisby. Actually, if you just go to Amazon search, type in Gay Lisby. Um, if you order that book, that helps her out tremendously. If you leave a review after you order that book, that helps her out tremendously. Um, so one of the biggest things when you, when you author a book like Gay has done is basically marketing it and getting traction on it. 
very similar to private label items. So this is actually one of Gay's first uh, private label products that she's put on Amazon. And she's put a lot of time into this. So I, I just encourage you guys, if you want to help another seller out, if you want to give value to me, if you want to say, hey, Gay, thanks so much for taking time out of your Sunday night just to share with us your story, which I particularly find extremely inspirational. Go to Amazon. You can do it right now. Um, help her out. Just do a search on Gay Lisby, do or, or God Within Us, and, uh, and order that book. So, all right, I had to put yeah. a plug in there for you. Andy, Andy's plug me in. Andy's awesome. You were down at the summit, and he's like, hey, I ordered that book. Or maybe I didn't get it ordered yet. Maybe if I was going to order it, I'll <laughs> order it right now. He pulls his, his smartphone or what I, iPhone, whatever it was, out of his pocket right then, dialed up Amazon.com, <laughs> typed in my name, and ordered the book while we were talking about the book you know that's the kind of guy is leading your group so awesome just blessed by him anyway thank you for that but you know i will say on this book it, this will lead me to something that, that i think is 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 going to be so valuable to you please listen to to what i'm about to say um in in january one of the other leaders of uh, Zach's group, Zach Young's group, is Gabe Strong, Gabriel Strong. Just a, just a tremendously intelligent young man. Fine, fine young man. And um, just blessed us coaches uh, in the group because we had a, a Google Hangout together. And, and uh, such a blessing just to, um, just to hear him pour into us. And then he said something that rocked me to the core. He said, we're going to go round robin style. And, and he said, here's a question I want each one of you to respond to. If you could do anything in 2016 and you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? <laughs> So you know, in, in you know, the first thing was, and it, then he turned and he said, and and Gabe, let's we'll start with you. And up out of my heart and out of my mouth came, I would publish the 2016 Christian nonfiction bestseller. <laughs> yeah. And you could have heard a pin drop. Nobody said anything. And then he said. What would it take for you to do that, Gay? <laughs> and I said, well, the manuscript is already written. All I need to do is press send. <laughs> and all of the coaches went, what keeps you from pressing send? And I just started crying, you know? And I just realized what kept me from doing what, was already there and it was already I had already created it the manuscript was already edited the manuscript was finished what kept me from pressing send was this feeling that I had that my marriage failed therefore I must be a failure hmm. and God's not gonna let a failure talk about something as important and as valuable as his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I must not publish that book. Mm. But when Gabe asked that question, that whole thing righted in me, that whole value system that had been skewed by my experience, because the experience will twist the reality. You know, experience is not reality. Yep. It's not. Yep. You know, your leg is broken, but you are not broken. Yep. No, it's not it's not your reality. And so that question righted that in me. Hmm. And I I felt this faith come up in me. And then to tell you the truth, we got busy. We got so busy in our business because we were growing and we were growing and growing and growing. And we're putting on it, it had some employees, and we're training, and we're working, and we had the summit in Memphis, and we have first one thing and then another. And and that kept getting nudged in me, but not fully. It's like women, you know when you're in labor, but it's 
false labor sometimes, and then you're like, oh, this, and then you, know, you can't get the kid out. <laughs> and so then Allison, I don't know if she's still on right now, but then I'm coaching Allison. This was in September, and we had a coaching session, and we're going along, and, and then all of a sudden, um, we're talking about private label, and we're going to work on this private label project together. And she's like, Andy teaches this, and Andy teaches this, and I'm, and we're, and we were all, we were popping. Man, we had ideas. We were putting the wheels on this thing. And, uh, and then she, she made a comment, and, and I said, well, yeah, actually, I do kind of have a private label project already. Mm -hmm. She goes, well, what is it? I said, well, it's a book. She goes, you wrote a book? <laughs> How? And she goes, why didn't you publish it? And she start she she asked this question and all of a sudden I start crying again. Mm. And I walked upstairs and 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 I said, that's it. I mean after after we were finished, yep. you know, the only thing I could say is the Holy Spirit showed up. I walked upstairs and I said to my sister, I said, you know, I gotta press in. It's time. Mm. And she and she just reorganized everything in in the, my world just to uh -huh. okay this is what you're gonna do you know our employee was working right down there during the session and after you know uh, Alice and our hangout was over she come right over and she hugged me and she said you're gonna publish that book uh -huh. and and here it is you know and and it's what what it is is understanding that. God really wants to be one with us, but how can we become one with a God we cannot equal? Hmm. We're just a little person. You know, we're just little beings, and he's God. How do you become one with a God you cannot equal? Hmm. It's by his Holy Spirit. And the, and the subject of the Holy Spirit is something that many Christians and even non-believers, people who haven't even experienced the transformative power of Jesus Christ, you know, they think that Holy Spirit, and, ooh, you know, maybe he's some sort of misty, wafty sort of a, you know, magnetic force or something, and we don't get it. Hmm. It's that God within us. And since that time, it's just it has taken all these limitations. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, hey, you guys, so definitely go, please do me a huge favor. Go on Amazon, pick up her book, Gay Lisby, uh, God Within Us. So, Gay, we're at 9.05. We're about five minutes over, but I cannot leave. I, I actually want to end the broadcast, if you don't mind. Uh, I, I, first of all, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I, I know that that is... Um, very near and dear to your heart. If you don't mind, though, can you share with us? Can you end the night? Can you conclude? Give us the um, the conclusion with the story that you would tell your kids. You shared it with me when we were in Kentucky. If they were going through a hard time, right, and maybe a little bit of self pity, you know, thinking they couldn't do it. Um, can you share with us? Because look, it's Q4, and we may come up against some days where we're working long hours, where we're you know, getting boxes uh, taped and shipments in, and we may, you know, may make some bad buys, you know, yeah. that, that we're like, man, I just don't know. And so we may fall into that kind of self-pity um, mindset. What, so what, what would you tell your kids and just um, in the night with, with what you would share with them? And, and I hope everyone that's listening hears this. Well, you know, uh, my, my, when I sent my kids to college and they're all four in a row, and I could count on it just by the calendar. I mean, I would just look at the calendar. I would know it's about time for Jacob. Well, it started with Jacob. You know, he called in, in October. This is too hard. You know, Bethany, October. This is too hard. You know, Sarah, I want to come home, Mommy. You know, Jesse, Mom, I don't think I'm smart enough for this. And they all got the same, same word. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you something. My great, 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 great grandfather was a 13-year-old fifer in the Revolutionary War. And he went off before all of the soldiers into the battle and was shot in the leg and taken prisoner on a very 
very life or death British prison ship, a hell they called it, the hell hole is what he put, they put him in, and took him as a slave to England for five years. He served in a house as a house slave in England. His family didn't even know that he was still alive. And then finally, after the war ended, he, he gets on a British ship and he's bound for the West Indies, sold, if you will, as a slave to the West in, to, to, to people in the West Indies. American mariner ship intercepted that ship and found the American prisoners, including my great 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 grandfather Peter Harrison Matthews, took him off, and the others deposited them in Boston. And he walked from Boston all the way back to Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. knocked on the door of his parents and said, I'm home. <laughs> 18 years old. 13 years old, he went into war. He's 18. <laughs> I'm talking to my 19-year-old son saying, fuck up, baby. <laughs> Pack another box. <laughs> Make another buy. Do another shipment. <laughs> I'm feeling like the world is coming down on your shoulders. It's not. We have not suffered unto death. Mm. We have not. So I made a bad buy. I had seven pallets of unmanifested goods that I bought. Don't do that. Do not do that. My sister had to pry my dead fingers off the pallets going, let it go, let it go. <laughs> it was like, but I want to make it pay. It's not going to pay, gay. Flush it. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> All right. Oh, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Make another buy. Push another shipment in there because your day has come. How exciting is this, Andy? That we get to speak into people's lives and their day has come. You know what? I don't live on a budget. I'm sorry. I don't live on a budget. Mm. If I if I yeah, get it, I mean, you know, we, we take trips. We don't look at the but we don't how much for food, how much for gas. We don't. Yeah. We don't. We give. We we see a need. Something happens, and we can respond. Mm. And that's so exciting, yep. so invigorating, because we have so many years gone. Well, if I had some, if I had twenty dollars, I would give it. Or if I had. And I don't have to say that anymore. In one awesome. year, we paid off our house. Amazon paid off our house hmm. in one year. Boom, mortgage gone. The the banker wrote paid in full. Mm -hmm. Some of you see my video on YouTube on it. It's true. It happened. That's it's still awesome. happening. That's awesome. So uh, there you guys have it. Uh, hopefully you are as inspired as I am, uh, as I was when I met Gay uh, two weeks ago uh, in Kentucky. Um, and uh, and I, I'll probably go back and watch this interview because it helps me. Uh, I often say seriously, like one of, the, one of the things that helps me the most is hearing inspiring stories. And it just builds up my faith to know that I can continue to grow my business. So I hope that um, as you've watched this, as you've viewed it, as you've listened, if you're listening on the phone, that you go away from tonight really understanding, really believing that if you want to really go all in, you can make this a full-time business and then more. You heard Gay just say that she went all in. She was able to pay off her mortgage within a year, and now she doesn't live on a budget. And what, what, what a great blessing that is, right? to be able to have the kind of income that comes in where you don't have to look at every single penny. And that's actually the opportunity that you and I have for selling on Amazon. So Gabe, I just wanna say thanks again so much for taking time out of your night uh, for sharing with us. I hope everyone that's watched or has listened to this or will watch the recording, I hope and that you go and that you purchase her book, please. Do, do me a big favor. And, uh, and just give some value to Gay. Um, look up, the, the title is God Within Us, or you can just do a search on Amazon. There it is right there. Just search Gay Lisby and her book will come up. Um, and so, you know, for those of you that may be struggling, go back and listen to this interview again. You know, if you have that limiting mindset, go back and listen to the interview. And, and man, you know, if you have a faith, um, you, you need to reach out, right, to, to God and say, look, help me to have a growth mindset. 
Show me what I have to do. Because I'll be honest, and Gay, you really, what you shared tonight kind of struck a chord in me. I had that self-limiting mindset for the last five years of my job. Even though I loved it, it was always this gnawing, fearful feeling. Um, but, uh, but I was able to break through that. And so um, don't have that, right, when it comes to all things in life, but especially when it comes to your Amazon business. All right, so we're going to go ahead and end. Again, thank you so much for hanging out with us, Gay. I hope you guys have a great life. I'm sorry, a great week. <laughs> have a great life, too. You know, just the fact that if you're watching this right now, we are blessed, right? You are blessed. Um, the, the speaker at our church today works for World Vision. They're actually doing heavy work with Syrian refugees, with families who have lived in little like eight by eight, you know, makeshift shelters for four years, right? Entire families have lived in these type of situations. And so if you're watching this right now, right, you are blessed. If you have a smartphone, if you're watching it on the computer, you're blessed. We, I think, probably each need to realize that more and more every day. That, that we're just blessed if we have this kind of technology and we're in this situation to be able to watch this. So that's my, uh, my, my uh, ad, ad, admonishment, right? Go through the week, start tomorrow uh, realizing, um, just uh, with the start today with gratefulness, realizing how blessed we are. So thanks a lot, Gay, again, for hanging out with us. You guys have a great Sunday night, and I look forward to talking to you again, Gay. Thank you. All right, thanks, everyone. Have a great night.